Hi everyone, this is Dr. Mike, and this is not a typical episode. This one is going to talk a little bit about glove safety. So I am a medical doctor, but I've been a practicing psychiatrist for many years. However, even as a psychiatrist, I have had to do medical things and I've had to use gloves. And I certainly have used gloves and things like my surgical rotations and those sorts of situations. So the reason I want to do the, today's video is because I'm seeing a lot of poor glove use out there by an unaware public. And I think in some ways, if you use gloves improperly, you can actually increase your chances of contamination of any sort than not even using gloves. So I thought I would talk about a cheap glove alternative, a little bit different than the nitrile or latex gloves that are, that's out there, but also talk quite a bit about the dangers of using gloves improperly in any situation. So first off, the most important thing that you can do is to follow the CDC guidelines. And that doesn't mean necessarily to wear gloves, unless you're a medical professional and you're doing that sort of thing. The most important thing that you can do is to keep your hands clean. And the best way that you can keep your hands clean is to use good old soap and water, wash those hands thoroughly, all the different parts, the tips and the backs and everything for 20 seconds. We all have heard this many times now, so we kind of know that routine. You wash the, your hands with soapy water, that breaks down the membranes of the virus, then you rinse whatever is left down the drain, and that's the absolute best option. The second best option is to use some sort of sanitizer that contains alcohol. And that's the typical Purell that everyone can't get now, but there's other sanitizers out there. Remember, there are sanitizers that do not use alcohol and they are not effective uh, against the coronavirus. So you really want to use stuff that has alcohol, uh, commercial product. Uh, if, you're, if you're going to make your own stuff, make sure that it's at least, I think it's 60% isopropyl alcohol or 70%, no, I think it's 70% isopropyl alcohol or 60% uh, ethanol um, types of alcohol. And, um, and you still have to kind of rub your hands for 20 seconds with that. So those are two known effective ways to make sure that you don't get the virus on your hands. Now, the other thing to remember is, is that your hands cannot absorb the virus. I could put my hand in a, in a petri dish of virus uh, cell culture or something, and it's not gonna do anything to me. It's when I introduce that virus to my mucous membranes by touching my eye, touching my mouth, touching my nose. Ooh, that was gross, sorry about that. That's when I'm gonna introduce the virus. And, be, and you may think you don't touch your face. We all touch our faces many, many, many times an hour. And you can try not to, and that's great. You're gonna to touch your face anyway. So, so try not to touch your face, but you're gonna do it. So the key is to keep your hands clean. Now, we know from the available data, as far as today, what is today is um, April 16th, as far as April 16th, that this virus is transmitted by, uh, by, by droplets that you expire when you either cough or sneeze uh, or even maybe talk a little bit, you know, if it's real close, or maybe sing. When you sing loud, it's like ugh, the, 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 you're spitting stuff out. You don't even know, but you're spitting stuff out. So, so that's why they want you to avoid going to church, for instance, because you're too close. People are singing. That virus is floating in the air, and you absolutely can get uh, a dose of the virus. So, so we're talking about this basic stuff now. What does that have to do with gloves? So let me give you an example. So we use gloves in a non-medical setting when we don't want to get contamination on our hands, right? And remember, contamination, whether it's stain, that you're staining a deck, or whether it's, it's virus, we just don't want to get that stuff on us. Uh, and especially when it comes to virus, we don't want to get that in our eyes, our nose, or our mouth. So we, we put gloves on. And it doesn't really make much difference what kind of gloves we use as long as they're impervious to the thing that we're avoiding. So you would not use, let's say, a cloth glove if you were dipping your hand in stain, right? Like, you know, deck stain or, or staining some boards or something. You'd want to use something that was impervious, like a plastic uh, or a latex, something like that. Um, and, and 
what we would do. So let me give you two examples. So last night I had the honor of touching up my wife's hair. Now, you know, this is this is a serious time in this in this planet. People want to look good. I support that 100%. And when my wife said to me, she said, can you touch up these spots up here? I can't quite get them. I said, oh, of course. But what did I do? I used the cheap pair of little gloves that came in this touch-up kit. I don't know if I did a very good job touching up, but I did the best I could. And I, I did my, my, my work, and then I immediately took those gloves off, right? So when you see people that are wearing gloves all over the place, and they're not taking them off like there's some special barrier, that's bullshit, all right? Because if I have a glove on, it's no different than my hand. Picture this, this I have a glove on this hand. Well, now I'm touching all this stuff and I'm at the grocery store and I'm going, I'm driving home and I'm, you know, uh, uh, putting my groceries away and I have my gloves on and I'm touching my face. Well, it makes no difference if, if I took that virus from my gloved hand or my hand hand, if I touch my face, I'm contaminating myself. Now let's get one thing clear. Remember, I said that all data at this point indicates that you have to have respiratory droplets. So even though they are finding some virus on cardboard cartons or countertops or whatever, there have been no reported cases that I'm aware of where a person became infected from their Amazon carton or a can of chicken soup that they opened or anything like that. So you do what you need to do, but but I have been unable to find any cases where people have gotten sick because of those sorts of things. So in my mind, I'm gonna put my energy doing things that are going to protect me, not things that are just gonna waste my time. Um, I just got a text message, that's why I kinda of looked away from here for a second. Um, however, there are some situations where I think, for me personally, wearing gloves makes some sense. And that would be if I'm grocery shopping. It's not that I'm so afraid that I'm going to touch a can of soup that you know maybe someone touched the day before, I'm not worried about that personally at all. But I am more concerned about going to those self-checkout lanes where I'm standing and you know there's been 20 people in front of me and who knows, someone might <clears throat> cough right in their hand, get that virus all over their hand, then they're touching that nice smooth surface so it's very concentrated on a little, little screen and then I touch that surface and I touch my eye. There is potential of, of some problems there. Although I don't know of a single case where it's been reported as a medical doctor and a former microbiologist, I can see this idea of cross-contamination. But you can't get these natrial gloves anywhere. You can't get these latex gloves anywhere. They're just not out there. But there is an alternative. And that is food handler gloves. These things are super cheap. They seem to be available. They're, you know, I, I by the way, I ordered some nitrile gloves on Amazon. It said no problem, they're in stock. And then it said I was gonna get them six weeks later. So be careful when you order stuff. There, there, there's lots of con artists out there. Or and make sure you look at the shipping. If it seems cheap, I almost bought a thermometer. It was a seven dollar thermometer, but they wanted to charge me fifty-two dollars to ship it from Amazon. Obviously, I I'm using the hand method to check my temperature. But food handler gloves are cheap. They work, they're plastic barriers. You get tons of them in a box. They're very simple. They look like this. So let's put on a pair of these food handler gloves and put them on. You know, and, and why are these not as good? And why don't surgeons use these? Because first of all, they're not sterile, but the sterility is to protect the patient, not necessarily you. And they're also um, not very dexter. You don't have a lot of dexterity with them. So, um, but for pick for grocery shopping, these are just fine. These, in fact, these feel a lot more comfortable than wearing some tight uh, latex or, or nitrile gloves. So, so you have these on, right? And now I've done my grocery shopping. Um, I've now done my checkout. Okay, my hands are contaminated because the guy in front of me just coughed and smeared it all over the screen. What am I gonna do? I wanna take these gloves off as soon as I leave that store or maybe even before I put my hand back on the handles of the cart that I already kind of sanitized a little bit. So I'm gonna take these off because I don't want to then take the stuff off there and transfer it. So the way that you take off gloves properly in a more sterile way is you, with one finger, you grab the outside and you pull this glove inside out. So now I am inside out here. So this part of the glove 
it's it's not contaminated and i can just I, with these i'm just going to pull up here i just pull these off like this with that part and now i can dispose of these gloves so the outside of the glove has never touched my my hand and my hand is clean now should i after this still wash my hands when i get home or sanitize as soon as i get in the car absolutely absolutely because because you're maximizing your your, your your chances of having as clean hands as possible. So remember, the number one thing to do is wash your hands. That's the best thing. After that, it's using a hand sanitizer that's alcohol-based and at the right level, and you gotta use these things for 20 seconds either way. You can do both if you want, like, you know, get in the car, use your hand sanitizer, get home, wash your hands, that's what I do. But in certain situations, it may be helpful to use a glove. You just have to be very smart about it. Think about that 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 hot, that that hair dyeing example. Those gloves came off immediately when I was no longer in a contaminated situation because I didn't want to put hair dye in my face. I didn't want to put hair dye in my little bit of hair that I got, right? Um, if I'm, I'm helping my friend and we're staining a piece of furniture, I don't want to uh, um, stain uh, my face with the stain. So you take those off immediately. You take them off in a way where you're not contaminating your hands with them, and then you clean afterwards. Um, and if you can't get the, the fancy gloves, anyways, leave those for the healthcare providers anyways, but if you can't just get the junky ones like to, you know, that you would use to uh, uh, stain stuff and whatever from the hardware store, these food handler gloves will do the job. Um, they're cheap, they're available, and um, there's really no shortage that I can see of them. So hopefully you've, you've um, you, this tip will help you. And I just wish you all some great health and happiness during this time. Try to stay productive as much as you can. Um, try to keep a routine as much as you can. Um, I know I'm not shaving, but beyond that, I am taking showers and stuff, so I'm, I'm trying to keep a routine, putting on clean clothes. Um, take care, everyone. Bye-bye.